thank you. So given the uh, talks we've seen thus far, I feel I need to set expectations appropriately. Unless something goes horribly wrong, the only thing making noise on this stage is likely to be me. <laughs> and, and it is highly unlikely to be musical in any form. That said, I do want to talk to you today about virtual machines, or VMs for short. A virtual machine is a way to simulate a physical system on another system. Why would you want to do this? Well, you want to share resources. You want to provide isolation and security. This is especially important. They're very easy to start, to stop, to spin up. And they're easy to scale up and scale down. You can spin up a 1,000 of them very easily. So this is the fundamental foundation of what we call the cloud today, also known as other people's computers. So why am I talking about this? Why is this important? Well, what I want to do is demystify it, first of all, that many people just know it as the cloud as a, or virtual machines, but don't really know how it works. I want to empower you to be able to know more about it, to be able to work with it, and I want to inspire you to be able to play with it. And if there's any audience that can be counted on to play with things, it's this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what all goes into a virtual machine? Well, you would expect a machine to have virtual hardware processor, memory, disk, network. But this isn't just for whole systems. You might have heard of containers. And it turns out most container hosting happens in virtual machines as well. Either you do many containers per virtual machine, or you do each container as one VM, for example, the Kata Containers Project. You might also have heard of function as a service platforms, the foundation of what we call serverless, which is, well, it's still running on a server, but you don't really care which server it is. It just runs your code. And many function as a service platforms use virtual machines as well. So Amazon's Firecracker, for example, this is a new project designed to be a minimal virtual machine just for function as a service platforms. So the common element of all of these is not the full set of virtual hardware. It's just virtual processor and memory. And these two things are so important that recent hardware, as of the last couple of decades, has dedicated hardware support for virtualization. And there's a common OS interface for it. So there's different things on different platforms. But on Linux, this is known as the Kernel Virtual Machine API, or DevKVM. Now, this is also the name of the user space software people use most commonly to drive it. I'm not going to go into huge depth on the full API. I wrote an article for Linux Weekly News a while ago on how exactly to drive this. But to give you a quick overview, you open the main KVM device, you'll get a handle to that as a file descriptor. You can create one or more virtual machines with that. Each virtual machine has some number of virtual CPUs, one or as many as you like, and then some amount of memory that you hand it to operate in. Now that's just CPU and memory, what about other virtual hardware? Well, this is where the concept of a VM exit comes in. Whenever you uh, have something you need to do that involves touching hardware, then the most simple way to implement that is, oh, well, I don't know how to handle that, but hey, virtual machine monitor, why don't you tell me how to do that and then start the thing back up again so it exits. So I want to give you a quick demo of this. I'm going to do the simplest possible piece of virtual hardware. I'm going to create a virtual serial port so that you can talk. And I'm going to, for this, I'm going to use a piece of software called Rust VMM. This is a minimum library that's relatively recent that was created to be a virtual machine as a library written in Rust. So I want to give a bit of a disclaimer. Rust VMM is a bit of a work in progress. So some of the things that I'm showing are very much experimental. The APIs might change. If you want them to change in particular ways, please come help. But the three crates I'm going to be using for Rust are KVM bindings and KVM ioctals, which give you the data structures and all of the calls that you need to make, and then VM memory, which is a nice abstraction for handling memory. So let's go through some code. I'm going to create a virtual machine, a KVM new. The question mark does error handling in Rust. I'm going to use the KVM handle to create a virtual machine. That's the only one I'm going to be creating in this example. I'm going to create a memory region. Now, this is not as magic as it looks like. This is just creating a mapping from memory in your host process to memory in the guest virtual machine. And it's creating that by asking the OS, hey, please mmap an empty chunk of memory, one page in size, 1,000 hex. So then we're going to write some code into that. I'm going to write some raw x86 code. This is about the simplest program I can write that does something useful. It writes one byte of data out to port 3F8, and the byte that it writes is by adding two registers, AL and BL, which will both have two in them. Add them, add ASCII zero to that, and I'm going to output, if all goes well, a four. So I'm setting that up. 
I add this memory region. I say, okay, this is the only slot of memory, slot zero. It starts here, it has this link that's in this pointer in my address space. These are all things I ask that memory region for because it keeps track of all of them for me. And I don't need to pass any flags like this is read only. Then I go create a virtual CPU to run some code. I have to set up the segment registers and special registers, so mostly this is saying my code starts relatively early in memory, so I only need a base of zero. And then the important bit, I'm saying my instruction pointer starts right at that block of memory I copied in, which is the second page of memory. My initial uh, A and B register values are two, those are the inputs. And then I need to run the thing. And this is what the inner loop of most virtual machines looks like, just a lot more complex, complex in a full-fledged virtual machine. All this is doing is saying, go run the CPU until it stops and says I need to do something. And in particular, if it stops and says I did I.O., and the I.O. port was 3F8, then write what I gave you to standard out, pretend to be a serial port. And if you halt, then exit gracefully. If you do anything else I don't expect, exit ungracefully. So as a demo of this, run the sample virtual machine, and I get a four out. So two plus two is in fact equal to four. Math works. And oh yeah, a whole complex virtual machine and machinery in the Linux kernel works too, but that's a side detail. So this gives you the basic idea of a virtual machine, but uh, this means that every single operation on your virtual hardware causes a VM exit. VM exits are really slow. You don't want to have every operation on your virtual hardware do this. So there's a lot of ways to fix this. There are mechanisms like IRQFD, IO event FD, which are ways to stream this data in and out of the virtual machine using file descriptors. There's a really nice system called vert.io, which creates a virtual device that cooperates between the guest and the host. The guest knows it's being virtualized, creates a PCI Express device. You can find it very easily. It creates a bunch of rings of buffered memory to pass data back and forth efficiently. And the host and guest just tell each other, oh, I've got new buffers to process. There's a whole Linux guest driver framework for this, struct vert.io driver. The Firecracker VM has a vert.io host mechanism for this. And relatively soon, there should be a Rust VMM crate to drive this. So this is how you would build much more complex hardware in a uh, virtual machine. The other fun way to attach things to a VM, though, is not just to attach it by hardware, it's to attach a memory mapping. Now, I showed mapping one page of memory into a VM. You could obviously map a lot more. You could say, here's your two gig of virtual RAM, but you don't just have to map memory. So this structure gives you a base, it gives you a size, it gives you where it is in your address space, which means anything that's in your host process could be memory to your guest. So not just RAM, you could map any, any page in your process. So what might you want to load? Well, this is how you could load your code into the virtual machine. Take a kernel image, map its pages in, and then execute them. You could provide contents of host files, data that you want to process in a sandboxed environment. You could provide in-memory data structures. You could provide shared memory buffers that are actually readable and writable from the host and the guest at the same time. So the point I'm getting at is virtualization is not just about whole systems, it's about anything that you want to isolate and secure inside a virtual machine, inside of this uh, sandboxed environment. So what could you do with that? Functions, libraries, sandboxes, drivers, arbitrary firmware that you're testing, all sorts of fun things. So I want to inspire the idea that you can play with a virtual machine, run interesting code in it, experiment with it, and a virtual machine as a library gives you the ability to do this with roughly a page of Rust code. So to sum up briefly, Rust VMM gives you a virtual machine as a library. If you want to build hardware devices, you'd use the vert.io mechanism to give you any hardware that you want. You can memory map things that are more than just RAM, and it's a lot of fun to play with. Now, if you have any questions, please grab me on Twitter as Josh underscore triplet. But before I wrap up, since I've got about one minute left, I wanted to say, I said that unless something goes horribly wrong, then I wouldn't be producing any sound on this stage at the moment. Well, the thing that went horribly wrong was that I saw a bunch of fun sound demos. So in about 15 minutes in the last break, I worked out how to make sound from a virtual machine. <laughs> So there's this great project that people have done for building music using C put care, write it to standard out, and then write it straight to an audio device. 
well, conveniently, all I have is a standard out, <laughs> and I don't have to emulate an audio device. I can run that from my host. So I hand compiled this with uh, translating it into 16-bit assembly code so that I can run it inside this VM without switching into 32-bit mode. It's a, the one-liner that you see up at the top there. And if all goes well or badly, this should make some noise. 